This is CHSR 97.9 FM here in Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. This is Python's Paradise, your film and music show, and this is your host, Greg Gilbert, a.k.a. the Python Hyena. And folks, I have my very first live interview in here today. Well, this is recorded, but still. I have a guest in studio. I had him in two years ago uh, on the phone when he was uh, going... He was in Vancouver at the time, but he's from Australia. I knew him best and still know him best as the Shit Flicks Critic. Folks, I'm happy to welcome in person Andrew Lewis, the Shit Flicks Critic. Welcome in person there, Andrew. Yes, no problem. I'm very happy to be in this part of Canada. Um, This is the first time I've ever visited the... This is the Maritimes, isn't it? Yep. This is considered the Maritimes. Yeah, so this is my first time out here and it's very lovely and it's nice to meet you and it's nice to be here in person well you know what it's interesting i got that message from you and when you you said you were hitchhiking around i'm like from australia but i guess that wasn't quite that extreme huh no i did i did in fact catch an airplane from it is a notoriously uh hard to hitchhike via airplane (laughs) Uh, you'd be waiting there for a long time so yes i did catch the plane to uh, i think it was to china and then to vancouver but yeah i basically hitchhiked here from from vancouver so it's been a very uh very interesting experience um it's certainly a thing on its own uh and it's just just a huge adventure and i've met all these wonderful people and yeah just um it's just been great Wow. Um, this, this is uh, interesting for me because uh, how expensive is it to go from uh, Australia to China to Vancouver? <laughs> it's actually um, not that not that expensive. And I think it was Australian dollars, I'm pretty sure. It was, uh, it was like $680. Oh. Um, the fact that you have to go to China actually makes it cheaper oh, okay. because the more direct it is, the more expensive. So I think a direct flight from... Adelaide to Vancouver, something like five thousand dollars, or like it's it's ridiculously expensive. So that's for people in business and who just need to get there like that. For people like me who want to save money, we have to go all the way around. So it was uh, it's a lot longer, but it's cheaper. Oh wow, mm. yeah. Well, you know, um, you're up here. I know you get. I know you don't have your guitar in studio with you, but uh, you had your guitar and and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, what got in you in, into uh, music? Because I, I know that for the longest time I knew you as the shit flicks critic. Mm-hmm. So uh, what brought this on? Uh, I guess it, it, I actually started with music. I've been playing music ever since I was 14. I love it. Um, I've always loved singing. I've always loved playing guitar. It was always something I put on the back burner. Um, it was always something I felt like uh, I could never do and make money from. So I went to film school. I uh, was working at a television station for a little bit there. And then the, the shit flick critic kind of emanated from all the, the skills that I learned there. Um, and I really like the shit flick critic uh, for the most part, but it did get to a point where I just, um, I just felt like I'd done everything personally I wanted to do with it. And there was this burning desire, you know, as I said, this, this back, this uh, metaphorical pot of soup on the, back burner was starting to to boil over and it was like all right well it's time to time to focus on that okay mm. so talk about some of your adventures traveling through canada oh okay um i ended up at a rainbow gathering at one point which is a bunch of hippies in the mountains uh, okay. <laughs> at a place called sasquatch lake uh, we were there for about i was there for about a week and a half very interesting experience uh very different um i'm i wouldn't call myself a hippie but i'm kind of i'm a person where i'll go to anything and it was it was very nice um i ended up with some mennonites uh staying at some mennonites in um in manitoba okay uh, a, a truck driver picked me up in regina and he took me all the way to winnipeg and then, uh, yeah, when we got to Winnipeg, it was about one o'clock in the morning. He's like, "Oh, so you know, where where are you staying the night?" And I was like, "Oh, probably just oh, I hadn't really thought that far ahead." And he's like, "Want to come stay at my parents' place in Steinbach?" I'm like, "Okay." And uh, yeah, it was very lovely. Like we got there, and his parents woke up at like one o'clock in the morning to come say hi to me. They're sitting in the uh, you guys call them house coats, I think. Mm-hmm. We call them dressing gowns, but they're sitting sitting in the kitchen and in their house coats looking all tired like oh you know so where are you from and just just ultra lovely and i ended up staying there for two nights they took me to the mennonite museum 
in town. Uh, yeah, just it always surprises me. And I, by this point, it shouldn't, but it always surprises me just how wonderful people are. And that's the, the most, the biggest thing I've gotten back from this whole experience is every time stuff like that happens, you're like, oh, people are really nice and good and they'll do nice things. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, what are the, uh, are your folks still in Australia? They are, yeah. What do they think of this? Uh, my mum is kind of like, she nods her head and smiles, but I can tell that she, doesn't quite understand what would make me want to do this, but she's supportive of things that I want to do. I think seeing the photos that I've taken has, has definitely, she sent me a message. She's like, wow, that looks amazing. It's like, yeah, it is. Like, I'm virtually not paying any money to travel across Canada. And I'm also meeting all these wonderful people in the process. And that's what it's all about is connecting with people. Like, it's not it's not just the hitchhiking in of itself. It's, it's just, yeah, meeting local people. When you drive places, it's just you in the car listening to music. But when you hitchhike, you get picked up by all these wonderful people with all these crazy accents like, oh, you know, so where are you, where are you heading off to there? Oh, yeah. You know, like, and they're just really nice and you have all these wonderful conversations and they take you to places you may have, you know, I would have never have gone to Steinbach, <laughs> Manitoba. Nothing against Steinbach, if anyone's listening here, which is, it, it, it could happen. Uh, but just... It just wouldn't have occurred to me, but I ended up in this little town. It's like, oh, cool. It just, ah, it's just, just a huge adventure. Okay. Mm. Well, I know that you were in Cape Breton, and then uh, mm-hmm. you contacted me. You were in Halifax. Yeah. And it was like, well, I'm, I'm glad you remembered I was in New Brunswick, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, I was quite surprised uh, to get your message. I was like, is he hitchhiking from Australia? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that would that would be a challenge. <laughs> well, I know that you went back to Australia. Um, I did, yeah, because I you were in Vancouver uh, working there, and then mm-hmm. were you going to school there too? No, I don't. No, I'm trying to think of what I may have said that would have made you come to that conclusion. Um, no, I was just working, and um, yeah, that was it really. Okay, uh, which was kind of. Yeah, again, not really doing a lot of music in my in my life at that point. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm doing music every day, I look back and I'm like, man, what was wrong with me? <laughs> like, I love this. But that's the other thing about the hitchhiking too is like every new town I'm in, I get my guitar out and I play for an hour mm-hmm. and, uh, and people just love it and they love hearing me. And uh, again, that's how I also meet people and, you know, they ask where I'm from and yeah, uh, I just love music, and it's just what I got to keep doing. That and comedy. Um, mm. uh, I can't imagine. I, how well do you do, like income wise, doing this? Um, pretty, it it fluctuates. Okay, but not not too bad. Like um, you know, uh, I don't know if, if the amount I make at the moment I could make a living off it, but at the same time, you know, I'm just going from town to town, so I'm not really mm-hmm. establishing myself. It's definitely something that I would do when I get back to Adelaide full time because um, I managed to hang out with a guy in Calgary who had the whole setup. Like he'd, again, established himself in the community, had all the spots, had an amplifier, which I don't have. And yeah, he was he was making pretty good money. Um, okay. Me, I just, I make an, enough to, to survive off of and then I move to the next the next place. So yeah, it's um it's pretty good. Uh on a bad day, I'll make about 30 or 40. Okay. The most I've made in a day is like 120. Okay. And that's like 2 or 3 hours. Okay. Yeah, so it's not too bad. Well, you know, at least you're you're giving your talent out there and you're you, you know, mm-hmm. it's like I mean, I'm not um I'm not coming down on people that beg money, but you know, mm-hmm. you see people out there that some people will give them money, and then it's kind of like with me. Mm. It's like if I see them with a cigarette or something, I'm like, are are they? Do they really need help? Yeah. Or are are they just trying to get their fix? Mm. You, on the other hand, mm. you're performing. You're giving them something, mm-hmm. and um, you know you're not. You don't have any set price or anything like that. No. And people just uh, give whatever money they have, and yeah. uh, I think that's uh, fantastic. Yeah, I, I always I always distinguish myself from people that beg. I am not begging. No. I have no sign. I don't give people a sad look as they walk past like like a puppy dog. I was like, mm, mm. I just play. That's all mm-hmm. I do. I get out there and I just play. And if people want to put money in my case, that is totally up to them. And sometimes people do walk past and I can see them check their pockets and they're like, 
they kind of gesture like a thumbs up, like they're enjoying it and then shrug. And I, and I always just kind of stop and say to them, like, it's fine. I like, just enjoy it. If you have money, great. If not, that's, that's not primarily why I'm doing this. It's just a happy side effect. You want to send a plug out to Tommy Wiseau to come and support your... <laughs> yeah, if he wants to come check me out. I think he'd enjoy it. Like, I, I play all the hits. I, I feel like he's he's a pretty cool guy, so... I know he wasn't cool with your, your shit flicks uh, critic video on the room. <laughs> no, I, but I, I often wonder how that happened. I, I don't know if he did it personally, if it was automated, um, because I didn't... It said, actually, yeah, I'm trying to remember how it happened. It got taken off, and then when I went, it said uh, on behalf of Wiseo Productions, I think. Okay. So he could have very well done it personally, and I sent him a message. Well, what I thought was him. It just it had an e- an email um, to I think if you wanted to uh, have a grievance or something, and I sent him something, and I never got anything back. But the beauty is, um, if you just if you send YouTube a grievance thing, if he challenges it, I have to go to court. But if he doesn't after like, I think it was two weeks, then it just automatically goes back up. And spoiler alert, that's that's what happened. The whole thing going to court, like shit, like, yeah. like seriously, like mm. where would you go to court? That's what I thought. It's like, and because I read online, it was saying something like a lot of these times when they do this, it's like they don't want to go to court either. They just don't want other people. I, it wasn't even about the money. I was making fun of his, a movie mm. that he liked. So he just, I, I think it, it's kind of like a pretty, pretty low thing to just be like, it's, it's, cri- it's criticism. It's like, mm-hmm. I'm not just playing the movie in its entirety and then mm-hmm. making money from it. I'm criticizing it in my own fashion, you know, um, and uh, he didn't like it. So, but bad luck. Well, you know, I, a lot of times too, because there's different forms of it. I had a, I never had a strike against me, but I had a couple mm-hmm. of uh, uh, alerts about, uh, pictures i had used along with the audio but mm. but um it was uh the per- whoever put those up i think it was one of the studios but i think they knew it was just you know an in- harmless interview and mm. you know it nothing nothing was done with it you know so and i think there's those those, those types you know so yeah it's 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 pretty pathetic in my mind like look at the context and mm-hmm. look at look at what it is and it's like you know, like even with me, like it's not like I was making that much money off of that thing anyway. So it's mm-hmm. like, even if I was, I don't know. But it's criticism, and under the and I looked up all the the copyright and everything, and it is it's protected under the. Uh, I mean, I'm going by the American laws, which I think is correct, even though I'm Australian. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how it works, but all I know is freedom of speech. It's like uh, education, uh, criticism, and satire, or something like that. I think of the three anyway. I'm not an expert, but I thought I was covered. Well, mine are not monetized, so my, maybe that's good on my part. But, mm. yeah, I, I think it comes down harder if they're monetized. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of, of an instance where I would be upset if someone was using my things, but not really. I guess with my music, if I uploaded a, a song online and then all of a sudden I was watching TV and there was an ad and I heard my song in the background, I'd be like, I'd like to see some of that, but... If I was like, if I was, if I got an email from someone like, "Hey, I'm just making a YouTube video. Can I use it?" I'd be like, "Go ahead, like, just go. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Don't I, even if you're monetizing it, like, whatever. It's just. I, don't know. I feel like the less you hold on to stuff like that, the. I don't know. Let's see if this analogy works. I feel like with creativity, it's like you're a tree, and you need people to take fruit so you can grow more fruit. Mm-hmm. And if you're just there and you and you don't want to give anything, then you won't make anything. That's how I feel. Okay. Uh, it's got a bit deep, but. All right. Mm. Mm. Well, you know, um, mm. I know that you've done, how many movies now have you done them with the Ship Flick Critic? I know since I interviewed you, you did do Miami Connection, which is an atrocity in itself. Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one, though. I liked Miami Connection. Um, I think I'd done nine by the end, and I started doing the really little ones. Mm-hmm. But, um. It, uh, it it just got to a point where I just, uh, as, as I, I, was, I was telling you before, it just became a chore and it stopped, you know, and I'm just the kind of person where I can't, um, I can't do that. If, if I'm not enjoying something, then I stop, which is either a good thing or a bad thing. But um, 
Yeah, and also it got harder with being in Vancouver, and I knew I had to leave soon, and and then my laptop got stolen with all my all of my files on it, which definitely didn't help. Okay, it didn't help anything. Do you have a favorite one that you've done? Uh, f- favorite review as opposed to favorite film? I would have to go with uh, Plan Nine from Outer Space. I really <laughs> liked that whole edit. I liked all the stuff about Ed Wood. Like I really got into that, and I that was one I really enjoyed because I loved the research, looking into his whole life, and then I did a little bit about Glenn or Glenda, and I just I watched that, and that's that's the one where I watch it, and I'm like, man, that was like I enjoy watching that. But uh, my favorite terrible film, oh, it has to be The Room. <laughs> like it's just hands down. It's just you know, it's like. My favorite band has to be the Beatles, and there's, mm. there's there's bands that I feel like are underrated, but I have to say the Beatles, and I have to say the Room. It's just you just have to. Well, you know, I um, <laughs> mm. the Room. Did you? I think yeah, it was 2017. I interviewed you. Yeah. So that was before the Disaster Artist came out. Did you see it? I did. I saw it on the plane on the way to New Zealand. Uh, how did I feel about it? I thought it was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I had low expectations. Not like I thought I'd hate it. I just thought it would be... Because um, between you and I, even though I'm saying it into a microphone, between you between you and I, I'm not a big fan of the whole Seth Rogen type movies. And he was in it with James Franco. I'm like, uh, here we go. I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was well made. Uh, I could tell a few things were embellished. But all in all, I thought it was. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Did you see Ray at the very, very end where you get to see James Franco and uh, Tommy Wiseau? Yeah, (laughs) that was cool. Yeah, I really liked it. I thought they put a lot of attention to detail in, Mm -hmm. which is what I really liked. I thought, here we go, like, I was waiting for the room set to look nothing like it. Um, But, like, when you see some of the shot comparisons, you're like, that would have taken a lot of energy. And I really liked it. Whoever, I'm pretty sure it's just James Franco, but or his team, they obviously really love that movie as much as I do. Mm-hmm. And that's why I, I really enjoy The Disaster Artist because I was like, yeah, someone got this film and it wasn't really making fun of it. It was like a love letter. I, I don't know. It was great. I, I really did enjoy it. Well, um, mm. he, uh, you, you also did Samurai Cop. <laughs> I did, yeah. That was the second one I did, I remember. I was living at my dad's in Edithburg. Yeah, a real winner. <laughs> yeah, that was uh, that one is actually one of the more boring f- top to bottom films that I've overviewed. There's there's nuggets of gold, but you have to dig through a lot of dirt to get to them. And there's some scenes where you're just like, come on, what's going on? Who are these characters? Why are they talking to each other? Well, the reason I bring it up is because Tommy Wiseau was in Samurai Cop too. <laughs> I've yet to see Samurai Cop 2. And again, I just, I know I'm probably not going to enjoy it. I just know that it's it's too tongue in cheek and there's no magic. And it's the magic that I watch these films for. And again, that's that's why I love The Disaster Artist because they got it. I just feel like these kind of, um, and there's a few that's happened. What was, there was one, I can't remember the name of the film. You might know it. Mm-hmm. It's just about this guy and he's an ex-army soldier and they kidnap his girlfriend and take her to a forest and the whole film is him killing everyone inside the forest to get to her it's anyway and they did a sequel to that because it was like again considered this really bad film and it was really bad but not like fun bad just like oh this is terrible because they understood how bad the first one was and they were trying to create the same magic and you can't do it intentionally except if you're Tim and Eric Tim and Eric are very good at creating that that life how about uh, Tommy Wiseau's newest film, Big Shark? <laughs> uh, I, I, have you seen The Blood That Drips on Alex? No. If you get a chance, that's one of his. It's a, it's a short film. It's really hard to watch. And I, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should watch it. Because The Room was too, but I guess, I guess because I've seen it so many times, nothing surprises me, but... I guess the first time I watched it, I was like, man, what is this? I, I, maybe I should check it out. I, I don't know. He, he makes me really uncomfortable. 
What about, okay, I know you said you were going to do Cool Cat Saves the World. I was, yeah, that was in the works. And that was, unfortunately, that was one of the, I hadn't gone that far into it, but that was one of the movies on the laptop when it got stolen. I was like, oh, maybe that's a sign. <laughs> um, it was just as I was leaving Vancouver, someone broke into my hostel room, stole my laptop with all my shit flick critic files on it, um, which is something I didn't tell you, which is another reason when that happened, I was like, Oh dear, but um, yeah, man, Cool Cat Saves the Planet. That's something else. That's like, what am I watching? <laughs> Who, what? Ah, oh, that's so confusing to watch. It's just like, what's going on? Just, just, uh, it's like a kids thing about gun safety. I mean, I suppose it is American, but even then, it's just, it's just bizarre. That was weird. Um, one I'd like to suggest to you if you okay. ever get back to it is Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Adventure. <laughs> I mean, I love the title, so... You gotta do that one. Oogie Lugs. O- Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon big Adventure. Balloon adventure. Like, I mean, even listening to the cinema snob do that one. Cinema <laughs> snob, yeah. Yeah, I love these movies in their unnecessary unnecessary length, like Cool Cat Saves the Planet. He, he could have just called it Cool Cat. And Oogie Lugs and the... Oogie Loves and the Big Balloon Loves Adventure. The Big Balloon Adventure. Okay, it's one of those it same kind of movies like Cool Cat Save the World. Cool Cat, and it's okay. really bad. <laughs> okay, all right. I will check it out. Yep. Another one I would suggest, and I know my brother Andrew would strongly suggest it, okay. is the Nicolas Cage version of Wicker Man. <laughs> oh, man. That's one of my favorite films ever. <laughs> oh, now you're talking my language. I love that. Uh, what's in the bag? A shark or something? It's just so... It feels like a, a fever dream or something. I'm just like, what am I watching? Why is he now punching women? And why is he in a bear suit? So many bizarre choices in that film. Yeah, I love, I love that movie. Oh yeah. man, now I feel like watching that tonight or something. Man, that's a that's a cracker. That's a that's a real nice film <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. <laughs> and of course, there's. Um... I like to bring up too because um, mm. you're in this part of uh, Canada, and yeah. of course, um, probably our biggest celebrities, and they're not from right here, mm. but close enough are the Trailer Park Boys. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, Ricky. <laughs> uh, Bubbles, what are you doing there? Where's Julian? Oh, here I am. Well, that's my impression. Do you, have you ever seen Swearing at the movie? Swearing at? Swear net. Swear net. No. Swearing at the movie right now. And I, I, I'd have to oust out uh, Wolf of Wall Street because they like to say it had the most profanity. No. Okay. Swearnet has 960, okay. no, 935 F bombs. That's quite a few F bombs. I mean, I'm not a mathematician, but it's got to be at least like one a second or something. Uh, That's crazy. They peppered that thing. Yeah, didn't they? Um, I saw posters for a hobo with a shotgun. Hobo with a shotgun. That was, yeah. I believe, shot in Halifax, I believe, okay. or somewhere around yeah. there. Yeah. Um, again, I'm dubious. Uh, I didn't mind Trailer Park Boys. Uh, I watched the first like three seasons, and then after the after three seasons, I was like. I think I get the formula now and I think I'm bored. And it was just like, I feel like Netflix could have just used the exact same blurb for every episode. Uh, What's the the guy with the red hair's name? Um, It's it's Bubbles, Bubbles? Julian and... Ricky. Ricky. It's like, Ricky wants to do something illegal with Julian's help and (laughs) Bubble is along for the ride. And Mr. Leahy doesn't like it. I feel like every every episode we just lost Mr. Leahy to. Oh not, no! Yeah. Oh bugger! That's a shame. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was a good show. I didn't dislike it. I just, uh, yeah. After three seasons, I was like, okay, I'm seeing the pattern here. I like their movies, though. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the movies. Um, I also didn't like how far fetched the, the the plot started getting to. Like, it, it was sort of grounded in reality, and then all of a sudden they're sneaking into backstage of Rush, and I was like, oh, <laughs> this is getting very. Uh, what would be the word? Like, you know, like, have you heard, heard the expression uh, flanderization? Yeah. Yeah, like where, like, yeah, Ned Flanders slowly started getting more and more his attributes. I felt like that started happening with Trailer Park Boys. It was just like this started getting a bit ridiculous. But, I mean, that being said, apparently, I watched it one, at one of the new episodes, and it was pretty good. Do you guys get Trailer Park Boys in Australia? Uh, I don't think we have it on TV, maybe. Maybe SBS probably has it. 
Um, I know I I learned about it through my sister Jess. She was watching it one day, but I think someone gave her a DVD. I don't think it's on television, but people know about it, especially people who've been to Canada. Well, here's a question. Since you're from sure. Australia, I, am. I love the wildlife, mm-hmm. um, but they got so many deadly creatures there. Yeah. What would you say mm-hmm. are the top three most dangerous dangerous creatures in Australia? I'll, I'll change that to in my day-to-day life in Australia. Okay. Because like I'm not too familiar with like crocodiles. I, I know that they're deadly, but they're not where I'm from so I'm not sure you know I, I don't have to fear them so if, if we change it to like the three animals that I fear most um, I mean brown snakes suck okay <laughs> they're ex- exactly what it sounds like it's a snake and it's brown highly venomous mm-hmm. venomous yeah poisonous well, is, is like the frogs yeah venomous well at least uh, the, the taipans in non populated areas <laughs> exactly yeah so like I'll, that's what I mean like there's a lot of like probably deadlier animals but no one's around so okay um, brown snakes I'm always wary of you, it's very hard to die but um, I someone was telling me a story about this girl said her who I met in BC said her ex-boyfriend went to Australia and went on a hike with this like bush ranger and halfway through the hike, the bush ranger got bitten by a brown snake and didn't know he was allergic and died. And him and this other guy had to carry his body back to civilization. Oh, so man. that's yeah. So um, that's up there. Uh, second, I've always been a very uncomfortable with the idea of um, blue ring octopus. Okay, yeah. Which again is exactly yep. how it sounds. It's an octopus that's got blue rings. Mm-hmm. Very small, and they hide in like Coke cans and stuff. Oh. When when I was a kid, it was like really watch out for those. Very rare, I think. I don't even think anyone's died in, of those in a long time. And number three, probably just sharks because they suck. Not the box jellyfish. Well, yeah, those are up in Queensland. We okay. don't we don't get those where I'm from. So again, maybe someone in Queensland would be like, "Oh, bro, like box jellyfish are like crazy, hey, <laughs> and people die all the time." But I don't know enough about them to be to be worried about them. But uh, where I'm from specifically, yeah, sharks, someone gets taken. It's like everyone always says to me, like, people get taken, like, I think it's something like maybe once a year or once every couple of years. Mm -hmm. And everyone says to me, like, oh, the odds of it happening to you are really slim. It's like, yeah, but that's what the person thought was thinking who died. You know, they would have gone out in the ocean like, oh, man, I'm not going to worry about sharks. The chances (laughs) are. So no, thank you. But, yeah, those, those are my top three. Queensland, that's where the cassowary is, too. <laughs> cassowary, yeah, those are those are vicious creatures. Yeah, they they got some interesting ones in but like it's it's all spread out. So like we don't have cassowaries, we don't have box jellyfish, we don't have crocodiles. Those are all in Queensland. Uh, but we have because we're by the desert, so we just have like sort of boring, dangerous animals. Um, but I mean, it would be interesting to do a tally to see how many dangerous animals are in North America and how many are in Australia. And I think. I don't think Australia has more. I just think the ones that we have are kind of, I don't know. They're not vicious. They're just we, we have lots of venomous things. And then you got, you know, you, you, I know you got kangaroos and they can be uh, feisty. Yeah. <laughs> but again, none more so than like a deer can be. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like people say, oh, but they can kill you. It's like, well, a deer can kill you if it really wants to. Yeah, deer just stand around and gawk and twitch their ears. Yeah, well, kangaroos too. I think it depends what species, because there's like countless species of kangaroo. Uh, the ones near where I'm from are, are always kind of. I don't. I don't know the difference between a wallaby and a kangaroo. So I, can, I don't know if they're wallabies or if they're just small kangaroos, and I don't know the difference. But if you go out into the outback, that's where you get like when they stand up, they're they're your height or my height. They're mm-hmm. like six foot, and they're like built like a like a gymnast. <laughs> gymnast. Is that what you call someone that goes to the gym, or is? Uh, oh, who are you? Anyway, <laughs> do, do, they're do, strong. Do you have uh, kangaroos and koalas and platypuses mm-hmm. where you are? Not platypuses. I think they're in a very particular part of uh, Victoria. We yeah. definitely. I've seen countless kangaroo mm-hmm. and koalas are harder to see, but they're around. Mm-hmm. You see them every now and again. I in, love koalas. In, e- emus. And emus, yeah, we got emus. Um, mm-hmm. Not in, Ad- like, I'm from Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Not in Adelaide, but around Adelaide, yeah. If you go for a drive, you'll see. We basically get, uh, where I'm from, we get kangaroos, koalas, echidnas. Mm-hmm. So, like, a little spiny ball. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> with a little nose. They're like a porcupine, but less... Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. they're less... Like, porcupines kind of look like a, a... You know, less mammal-looking. Like, they, they got a little pointy nose. But, yeah, we get those. Uh, um, possums we get. So what have you seen here? Oh, loads of stuff, actually. Especially this trip, because I've been hitchhiking, so I'm kind of out in the wilderness a lot. So I've, I've seen about three bears... Have you uh, seen bear? I don't see bears. Black bears, I've seen. Yeah. Cubs mainly, which is worrisome. But I think they were adolescent, so the mums weren't around, which is good. Because, okay. yeah, when I was at this uh, hippie thing I was telling you about, we mm-hmm. were just floating in these uh, like inflatable donuts in the lake, and this black adolescent bear just came up and had a look at us and <laughs> sniffed something and then ran away. Uh, I've seen a bunch of beavers. Yep. Quite a lot. Same at this same lake that I was telling you about. There was mm-hmm. a family of beaver. A uh, bunch of deer. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen a moose yet, which is disappointing. You know what? I haven't seen a moose either. You haven't seen a moose? Yeah. We got Man. the signs going through from here I to St. John. And uh, <sighs> I never. But you know what? I kind of consider that a blessing because I don't want to hit one. <laughs> exactly. I said to someone, I said, I either want to see it um, in a safe distance on the side of the road or mm-hmm. I'll take a dead one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's something, but... Uh, but their deer are all over the place. Yeah, deer. They're yeah. like kangaroo. The, the, mm. the, it, it's the exact same density of deer here as it is kangaroo in Australia. Mm-hmm. And, like, you don't get a deer in the town, and you don't get kangaroos in towns either. They're always outside. Uh, yeah, I'm trying... Oh, bald eagles, I saw a bunch of those. Um, well, we got raccoons. Raccoons, yeah, yeah, heaps of raccoons. Skunks. Skunks, yeah, saw some skunks. <laughs> Uh, kept my distance because <laughs> I know they're... Uh, and occasionally shitty. you see foxes. I don't think I've seen a fox. Yeah, um, hmm. around Silverwood and uh, around the Magnaquack Dam, we, uh, you see the occasional fox. I'm trying to think if I have. No, I haven't. Are they, they're not native, are they? Like, they're introduced, I imagine. I have no idea. I think they're from here. I wouldn't, because we get foxes where I come from, but there's no, there's no way that there's, um, they're Australian. Well, these ones here are red foxes. Red foxes, yeah. yeah. Okay, interesting. I'll have to look that up. Yeah. Uh, what's another? I'm trying to think. Something else where I was like, oh, wow, look at that. I'm going through all the photos I've taken of animals in my head. <laughs> I didn't get to see a Sasquatch, which was disappointing. No, no Sasquatch. <laughs> no, and I was at Sasquatch Lake in BC. <laughs> and they called it that because that's where the CIA, in the late 60s, the CIA came over from America to this lake because I think it had the most... Sasquatch sightings out of anywhere in Canada, the CIA came over with all these people and they hunted and, uh, spoiler alert, yeah, they didn't find anything. Or did they? <laughs> That's well, the question. my final question is, uh, what films do you want to do for Shipflix Critic? Okay, and I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, but there is a chance that in the future, when I feel like I'm comfortable with my surroundings, because I am going to go back to Australia at some point and not settle, but... You know, just be in one place for long enough that I can edit one of these things. It, it could very well happen, and I'm open to the idea. If I did, uh, I mean, Neil Breen's up there. <laughs> Neil Breen, am I saying that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, those are those are something else. Uh, and then um, what else? Yeah, Cool Cat Saves the Planet, the World. That's one. Um, I'm trying to think what else there is. There's another one that I wanted to do, that I always wanted to do. Uh, Mac and Me. Mac and me, the, okay, uh, yeah. the the alien thing, <laughs> the 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 McDonald's ET basically, um, ET brought to you by McDonald's. So I've always wanted to do one of those. So those are up there because I've got Mac and me on my little intro. though. you know you're gonna see the best of the worst with the shit. And if anyone needs to know my music ability, they can get a little bit of that by my intro, which everyone seems to like. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, those are possibly coming up. And the beauty is, is that. All my subscribers are still there, and they're all super supportive. Every time I make a video like, hey, this is what I'm up to, everyone's just like, man, take your time. And it's really nice to have know that there's no pressure in that respect. So where are you heading after Frederick? <sighs> I'm going to try and get to Maine. Mm-hmm. But uh, we'll just see because um, I don't think I'll have any trouble at the border, but um, I don't know. I'm just always bad in those kind of things. I always look like I've done something wrong. <laughs> And I feel like I have, even though I haven't. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember, like, 
one time I was in the I was in the Adelaide airport mm-hmm. and customs went through all my stuff looking for drugs and I, I was almost looking with them because I'm expecting to find something like yeah <laughs> wh- where is it or maybe it's in there but spoiler alert yeah no no drugs but uh yeah so I don't know I just I'm always uncomfortable but I'm just gonna go and just try and enjoy myself and there I'm, I want to do New England and then try and head to the south like North North Carolina South Carolina down mm-hmm. there say so see what see what's up mm-hmm. it's been quite an adventure. Well, before I let you go, Certainly. sing the Ship Flicks Critic song. Of course. I wish I had my guitar, although I can't remember what the chords are. But um, <coughs> hold on. Let me get my throat in order. <coughs> <coughs> you know you're going to see the best of the worst with the Ship Flick Critic. You know you're going to see shit that's absurd with the Ship Flick Critic. From Pandemic the Room, Samurai Cop Troll 2, Man of Science of Fake Miami Connection 2. To come along, see the worst with me. I'm the Ship Flick Critic.